believe I had a, I had a near one design in the Swan 42. And I, the, that program came to an end as one design and began to look around and think what I wanted to do next. And so I had, I'd had a wooden boat a long time ago. I had actually studied architecture. There's an element of beauty in sailing and wooden boats really bring that out more than perhaps anything else. And so a couple of years ago, we started looking for a wooden boat. Myself, my wife, and Tim kind of bird docking what we saw. But I mentioned to them that Alera, New York 1, New York 30 number one, uh, showed up in the harbor I'm in, in Booth Bear Harbor. And I went over and took a look and introduced myself because I was just so impressed with that boat. And uh, Klaus, who's the owner, is a very big supporter of Harishaw boats. So we started looking for a wooden boat. And because of the experience with the one design with New York, I thought it'd be wonderful to have a New York one design. It, you know, and so we didn't find a 30 we liked. Tim had been paying attention. So he called me up a couple of years ago and said, there's, been, there's a 40 coming on the market and maybe you ought to take a look. We kind of watched it and then last summer put in a bid and was able to, to buy it. I, the joking comment is, there's only one time you want to buy a boat that's after someone else has restored. And it's not to be rude, but you know, restoring a boat is an unknown expense. You, I actually looked at a, I looked at a New York 30 with holes in the side, and I went to the yard and said, how much? And they very honestly said, we can't tell you. We'll start, and we'll keep sending you bills, and when you're done, you're done. And I kind of went, that doesn't fit well with my, my me. And so um, I, we, my wife and I were very pleased to have the opportunity to know what this boat, the shape that she is in, having just done the restaurant. Tim Rudder and you know, the guys at French and Webb, Dennis Gunderson, who was the captain at the time, did a remarkable. Over time, as you know, you build up a, a crew list of some number, 20, and you got your regulars and you got your fill in. So, and so far, I mean, I, we introduce a new person every once in a while, as one does, but these are the people who have mostly raced with me for years, and that's fun. And, they're, and with the Marconi, if you look at it, yeah, there's things we have to learn about this jib versus those jib, but it's a big sloop. And so we, that translates really well. When we go to the gap, which we will at some stage, we're going to have to get some assistance. Uh, none of us are gap. So we'll introduce some new folks then to help us out with learning the gap. She needs, she, number one, she needs a breeze to get her water line to work. So if you're at six knots, she's not hard to sail. You just, she's a lot of boat. So you get, you know, call it nine, ten knots, she'll get over there. She's, she's pleasant. She's got helm, but not overwhelmed. We've had, you know, the last uh, annual, we had a couple days that were high team. That's a beast. We made it work. And you do make it work. And I drove it 98% of the time. Um, but it's, she's, she's really, I mean, like every boat, they've got their sweet spots. Somewhere 12 to 16 is her sweet spot. Uh, that's not surprising. But she can, she's, she can do more. Just she has to be more challenging with it. It's the same learning curve you had if you go back on the 42. It's kind of like, you know, it's brand, you get on a brand new boat with a team and you go, all right. We need to change the fairly. You need to change this. You need to change that. Let's try this. Tweak this. Tweak that. We're not tweaking the mass in that sense, but where the where the lead points are. How do, how long do you have for the strops? Or you, where you strop and lead? Let's try something else. You know. And right now we have the benefit of sailing with Jack Slattery. Jack has been sailed with me on the 42 when I first got it. We've known each other for a very long time, and having a sailmaker like Jack on the boat is really helpful. He can look at the sails and say, "This is what we didn't want to do." Um, in 42s, you know faster what you're doing right and wrong because you're looking at a one design right next to you. So you got that instant feedback, right? Now, we are fast and we're high. Let's make sure we know what we're doing because this is working. Or we're low and slow. Let's do it. Um, I haven't raced it enough to know how I'll... And in the 42, you because it was a new, really first big... I did a J105 before, but this was my first really big boat one design. You do a lot of thinking after the fact. The other comment I made to somebody today is, remember my what I see in a race? is about 15 degrees either side of my head stay and a speed up, unless I'm in close contact with something. So with the 42, you'd go back and sort of analyze the race as to what people were doing. You know, if you had somebody who had actually given you the, you know, the electronic following of the race, et cetera. Um, your joking comment is how much were we into numbers on the 42? The answer was we weren't. We, are, we, are, we approached it like a dinghy. And that actually turned out to be very effective because you sort of, once you get your boat speed down, and that's what's critical on any boat, without speed, your tactician can't do his job. 
once you figure out your boat speed and how to make that work, uh, the numbers, you know, you're not going to Bermuda. We're not going to England. We don't, you know, it's, it's, it's boat speed. It's knowing the currents. It's reading the sails. It's, it's those fundamentals.